Alan Wake is a third-person shooter developed by Remedy Entertainment and published by Microsoft for the Xbox 360. It was originally announced in 2005 and was finally released on the Xbox 360 in 2010 with a PC version released in 2012. The game was built using the Max FX 3.0 engine and was touted by Microsoft to be one of their system's biggest exclusives of 2010. As an exclusive game for the system with a 5 year development cycle that just so happened to be developed by a studio with a pedigree like Remedy Entertainment, who had previously worked on Max Payne 1 and 2, Alan Wake had a lot to live up to. I had an interesting time with Alan Wake. You play as the titular character, obviously, a writer who hasn't had a successful novel in a couple of years. In an attempt to get your mojo back, your wife decides you should go on a holiday as a couple into the sleepy town of Bright Falls. Long story short, she's dragged to the bottom of a lake by a mysterious dark force, and then you wake up a week later after a car accident with no memory of how or why you're there. And so you go off in search of answers and to try to save your wife. The story can actually be quite interesting at times. I mean, it's nothing original, but it doesn't follow the typical narrative structure I'm used to experiencing in most video games, and that was nice. The game was built as a psychological thriller, and the setting and story do a lot to carry the game in that direction. The story is helped a lot greatly by the episodic format of the game. There's even a nice little recap at the start of each episode, which I thought was a nice little touch. Episodes are something I've always liked in games. I don't know if it's because I like being able to select parts of a game to replay from a menu, kind of like the chapters of a DVD, or just because I like keeping my system neat without a million different save files, but I always just kind of appreciate a game that offers up a story in chunks like this. The game also has an incredible sense of atmosphere. This is largely due to the beautifully crafted environments, fantastic lighting and impeccable ambient sound design. If the game had taken place anywhere other than the mountainous woods of Washington State, the game wouldn't have worked. In fact, I'd go so far as to say the strongest element of the game is its sense of atmosphere and that the environments are the real star of the game, day or night. If only the characters had been given that same sort of love and care. You see, as well told as the story is, and as solid as the pacing is, in terms of the narrative at least, the whole thing falls apart due to the characters, or at least it did for me. You have Alan, who I'm assuming as the player I'm supposed to relate to, but really couldn't. This is mostly due to the fact he's really good at making bad decisions. I spent half of my time watching the cutscenes yelling, Alan, don't do that you idiot! Why would you do that? And the worst part is, he's not alone. It would appear that everyone in the town of Bright Falls is a complete numpty. Alan's best friend Barry shows up partway through the game, and as if it wasn't bad enough that he's the most annoying psychic in Navi, he's also a complete moron. Oh hey, we're trapped in a house surrounded by dark supernatural beings that are afraid of light. How about instead of boarding this place up and making sure the power keeps going, we get drunk on moonshine! Yeah, good fucking idea, idiot. Then there's this psychiatrist who tries to trick you into thinking that you're actually insane and that it's all just a dream. This is so that he can have you write a novel for him and he can pocket the cash. Dude, Alan's already washed up at this point. It's over, man. It's gonna be more trouble than it's worth. Everyone else just really comes across as one-dimensional and little more than a stereotype. Don't even get me started on Alan's wife. She disappears in the first chapter, you know, so you can go find her, but aside from a few flashbacks which do little other than let you know she's afraid of the dark, you don't really get to know her as a character. And because of that, you have absolutely no incentive to go save her other than because she's your wife. I know that saving the princess is kind of a staple of video games, but it has no place in a game like this, and she really should have been much more well developed as a character. The game also has a really bad habit of taking the characters in a direction that you as the player wouldn't want to go in during the cutscenes. I know most games do this, but because of the strength of the story in this game, it felt extra frustrating. You can't have an engaging story that's supposed to pull me in as a player, and then have the characters force me into illogical situations that I wouldn't have chosen for myself. Because of this, I found the game felt more and more like I was just watching Alan get himself into stupid situations, and then forced as the player to get him out of them. I felt less and less like I was experiencing the psychological thriller, and more and more like I was just babysitting a child. A really stupid child. Thankfully, getting Alan out of trouble is a lot of fun. Generally. With Remedy Entertainment being the team behind Max Payne, you would expect the shooting in Alan Wake to be damn near perfect, and by god it is. In fact, the combat mechanics in Alan Wake is one of its strongest assets, only slightly behind the environments. Unlike most third-person shooters where you just, you know, shoot, 
Alan Wake forces you to use light tactically in order to whittle down the darkness around enemies before you can shoot them. It's a nice mechanic and it uses it very well. Generally, you either shine a torch on an enemy, or you can use a flashbang to pretty much instantly remove any of the darkness from them. The guns all feel really nice with great sounds and a really nice sense of kickback, and having to use the torch first can lead to some really tense situations. Unfortunately, as fantastic as the combat mechanics are, the combat itself gets dull quickly. This is largely due to the lack of enemy variety. You'll find yourself shooting the same 5 or 6 different kinds of enemies over and over during the 10 hour experience. It's a shame because the shooting really does feel great and there's even a little bit of depth with upgradable torches and the addition of flares later on but I do find it amazing how big a detriment something as simple as having such a limited number of enemy types can have on a game like this. It tries to make up for this with the sheer numbers of enemies on screen at once, with them completely swarming you at times. But these moments tend to be just more annoying than exciting. Especially when some of the enemy's attack patterns are really fast and hard to follow because of Alan's slow turning speed. Sometimes the game also mixes things up by having you fight crows, which is nice. Although, they just call them birds in this game. I guess the visuals weren't enough of a homage to Hitchcock's classic. I had to chuck the name in there too. My favourite moments in the game were actually the ones where you had no weapons and were forced to just run. I wish there were a few more moments like this in the game, but I guess they thought the gamers would get bored if they didn't put enough shooting in. And I think this design philosophy spilled into the level design, as some levels are really long and have you pretty much relentlessly shooting things while you're only slowly making progress in terms of ground covered. I know it's all taking place out in forests and the like, with places of actual interest far apart, but these levels are just too long for my liking. I feel like if there were more quiet moments where it was just me, my torch and the sounds of crickets in the wind as I walked as opposed to an endless barrage of copy paste bad guys, this wouldn't have been an issue, or it could have even made the game's tension stronger. The last level in particular, which suddenly decides that you haven't driven enough in the game, is especially bad pacing wise and it really ends the game on a low note. That said, there were two set pieces that I really enjoyed. One defending a helicopter as it gets ready for takeoff, and one a viking themed rock concert stage. Despite the fact that they just recycled the same enemies here, the mechanics work slightly different as ammo is really really plentiful, and you get to get creative with your kills, which I always enjoy. The rock concert is especially a real highlight for me, and maybe the best moment in the game as a whole. But lastly, and probably my biggest issue with the game, is the sense of hand holding within it. What's strange about it though is that it doesn't beat you over the head with it. Like a lot of other games do, it's much more subtle. You see, as part of the story, Alan is finding pieces of a story he has written that seems to be telling him his future. Now, you don't need to read these, but the game suggests that you do to get the most out of it. What this does, however, is basically spells out every single little thing you need to do. That doesn't sound so bad in theory, but the problem is Alan Wake is extremely linear. You walk in a direction, and you kill guys. Sure, there's the occasional puzzle here or there, but nothing any more complicated than you would expect to find in any 3D Mario game. Yet, here's these notes telling you how Alan solved the puzzle right before you come to it. What's worse is Alan's constantly narrating what he's doing. If you walk into a woodmill and need to turn the lights on, Alan tells you you're in a woodmill and you need to turn the lights on. What makes this complaint hard to justify is that these things both serve the story and the character, and it makes sense in that context, and this is what I feel as Alan Wake's biggest problem as a whole. It doesn't know what it wants to be. Alan Wake puts story first, atmosphere second, and gameplay third. It really does feel like the developers wanted to tell this grand story and then realised towards the end of development that they needed to put some gameplay into it as well. What works in the game in a storytelling capacity generally doesn't work well with the game in the gameplay capacity. And you end up with this weird dichotomy where the game tries to pull you in two different directions. One being the story, and the other being the gameplay, and both end up suffering a great deal because of it. I can really appreciate Alan Wake. I'm a big fan of third person shooters, and I love the more story heaven direction they took it in. Despite its weak characters and bland enemies, it does have great attention to detail. Its world and atmosphere is superb, the story is interesting, and the shooting is brilliant. It's just a shame that somehow, in pulling all these things together, it ends up coming out feeling kind of like a confused mess. Or at least, it did for me. It's not a bad game by any means, it's a good game, it's a fantastic game. But maybe that's what makes the flaws in the game stand out that much more to me. Despite my issues with the game, I would still recommend picking it up. In fact, I encourage you to pick it up. You can find it really cheap now, and even if you don't enjoy the gameplay that much, you can always play the meta game of Whoa. Spot the Stephen King get, reference. Get back 
back of the cell, Stephen King. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, you can always like and subscribe or let us know in the comments below what you'd like to see. If you want some more content, we have more on the way. But in the meantime, me and Jessica both have our own Let's Play channels that you can see over on the right there. Be sure to check those out if you're into that sort of thing. And hopefully we'll see you next time.